And welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Monday, September 24th. I am the host for today's program, Paul Domain, and many of the stories we read here can also be found on our website, so let's get right into them. A Norman native and member of the Osage Nation has been nominated by President Barack Obama as the next Special Trustee for American Indians. The Office of Special Trustee for American Indians manages about $3.7 billion in Indian funds held in trust by the federal government. The office also manages Indian leases for natural resources such as coal, oil, natural gas, timber, and grazing. The, the, uh, that uh, generates incomes for the trust accounts. Vincent G. Logan is the owner of the Nations Group LLC, which works with Native American tribes on asset management, investment strategies, and financial education. He's also a member of the Oklahoma State University Foundation Board of Governors. Logan received his undergraduate degree from OSU and his law degree from the University of Oklahoma College of Law. The U.S. Senate has also confirmed a member of the Chickasaw Nation of Oklahoma, who is currently the Dean of the University of New Mexico Law School, to oversee the Bureau of Indian Affairs. The Senate approved President Barack Obama's nomination of Kevin Washburn as Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs by unanimous consent on late September 21st. The vote was applauded by Secretary of the Interior Ken Salazar. Washburn has been UNM Law School Dean since June 2009. He also worked as a federal prosecutor and has taught law schools at the University of Arizona and the University of Minnesota. And today we're going to go to Shoshone Bannock tribal member Mark Trahant from Fort Hall, Idaho for an update on his perspective of where the presidential election is going. And we're going to try to keep you updated on that and other races around Indian country in the United States as we move into election day. Uh, welcome to the uh, Native News Update. Uh, Mark Trahant here at Indian Country TV. We're uh, always wondering what the next political discussion may bring us. Uh, 44 days left in this race. So tell us a little bit about what you think is going on and let's talk about uh, the Native vote and what's going to happen there. Sure. Well, the big thing is um, questions about how far ahead uh, the president is in uh, the key swing states. The national polls show it staying really close, but if you look state by state, there's really no state that matters where Romney has a lead. And uh, that's why you see a lot of Republicans sniping at Romney about trying to get more energized. The thing to watch here is if uh, the Republican PAC start pulling money out of the presidential race and putting that money into the Senate and House campaigns, then you'll know they've decided it's over. Uh, well, that's interesting because, uh, again, as you indicated, the national polls are sh still showing Obama overall. Uh, at about a three-point spread, I'm just going to take a uh, peek at uh, Real Clear Politics. Uh, that's got them at 3.7. They keep they take all the polls together and combine them. They've got them running about a 3.7 uh, ranking or spread across the country. And as you said, there's a difference between national polling and what happens in uh, those uh, states where. Uh, it's going to matter. Uh, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Virginia, Wisconsin. Uh, it's boiling down to a few states. Um, let's take a look at this real quick. I'm going to throw this in here. We've got early voting uh, has started in Minnesota, West Virginia, Oklahoma, South Dakota, Georgia, Arkansas, Idaho, and Maryland. Uh, as of uh, before last Saturday, this Saturday, uh, 13 additional states, South Carolina, New Jersey, Maine, Michigan, Mississippi, New Hampshire, Tennessee, Texas, Vermont, Delaware, Virginia, Louisiana, Missouri. That's almost half of the country is beginning to cast early votes or absentee ballot votes. What does that have to do with the election? How does that impact the election? Well, it's huge. Um, in fact, I thought that I would vote this week and get it out of the way. Um, one of the things that's really interesting about modern elections is nearly half the electorate votes before the election. So um, if half the electorate votes, and let's say there's a big scandal on Thursday, it doesn't matter. They've already voted. <laughs> so um, the earlier people vote, the more it kind of takes both campaign commercials and events out of the equation. 
don't they have to, uh, I mean, in, in this case, in some states, for example, Obama and Romney were running toe-to-toe -to -toe there for a while. Obama was ahead, and then after the uh, recall election with Walker, uh, the uh, convention, the selection of Paul Ryan, there was a nice little bump in Wisconsin. All of a sudden, it became competitive, but it uh, immediately dropped off after the Democratic convention, and, and of course, every gaffe about the 47% and everything else seems to have pretty much sealed Romney's uh, fate in Wisconsin. Obama's pulling again, you know, five to seven points ahead of uh, everything else. Wisconsin may be out of the play. The Bill Clinton bump. Uh, well, that's, I think there's a lot of people who would agree with the Bill Clinton bump coming out of the convention. But could Romney hand uh, the Democratic campaign any more gifts than what he did here in the last week or two? It certainly was not the best politics. I think that's fair to say. Um, yeah, I mean, this campaign is not one of the best managed. I think it says a lot when the candidate gave out bonuses this early and is already telling people, here's some extra money for a job well done. Uh, we don't know if it's a job well done yet. We'll find that out in a few days. Right, right. We don't know if it's a job well done yet. So um, the other thing with, uh, with, with the campaign polls and everything going where they are right now, um, it's going to, you, you've always indicated that it brings it right down to a couple of uh, states on the Electoral College uh, uh, ranking. Tell us what you got on, what, what are we looking at in terms of electoral votes where things are? If the race was held today, what would happen? Right now, if the race were held today, Obama would win with probably over 300 electoral votes. It takes 270 to win, but there are a few states that he's ahead by two or three points, so a very sudden shift could change that pretty radically. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, I laid out a column last week where I showed how it could end up in a tie at 269 to 269. And if there is a tie in the Electoral College, Romney wins uh, because the vote then will go to the House of Representatives and, of course, Republicans control that. House of, uh, House of uh, Representatives is controlled by the Republicans, including Tea Party Republican uh, Sean Duffy from uh, the 7th Congressional District. And interesting enough, if you look at uh, the polling on Obama, Obama in the lead by five to seven points, Tammy Baldwin running for the Senate against former Governor Tommy Thompson, now in the lead uh, statistically by just a fraction. And, and, and Tommy Thompson has said that's because of the surge, of the failure of Romney to um, attract people in key states, right. that uh, he can't run against both uh, Bill, um, President Obama and Tammy Baldwin. Uh, it's taken um, Scott Brown out of the race in Massachusetts. One of the interesting things that's happened in the last decade is that basically eight out of ten or nine out of ten Democrats and Republicans vote for both their own party for president and senator. There used to be a lot more ticket splitting and that's just pretty much stopped. And that's causing a lot of consternation, particularly in Wisconsin and Massachusetts and places where Obama is doing well right now. Obama does well. Uh, Democratic Senate candidate Tammy Baldwin uh, gets pulled along into it. Uh, perhaps uh, Congressman Paul Ryan is at risk because of the same kind of a feeling. The polls there seem to say that right now it's a, it, it's a toss-up, even though that's a leaning red Republican uh, congressional seat. So we've got a lot to go up to. I was looking at Paul Ryan's uh, voting record. I don't know if you had a chance to look at that, but it seemed to me that under the right circumstances right at the moment, Paul, their Indian country would have a very difficult time uh, having any kind of a relationship with uh, Paul Ryan. Right. What can you tell me about his, his record? Have you looked at it very closely? I have not looked at it really closely. I looked down the list, but it seems to be basically the straight party line on where Indians have been with the Republican House. Uh, not a lot of thought either way. Is it the Republican House, or is it because of the pulling of that Tea Party right? Has that, is that where it's at? I think it's, it's the at? pulling of the Tea Party right. It's, it's just pulled the whole party to the right. Okay. Uh, you're seeing a lot of folks... Um, that just don't want to kind of concede any of the traditional interest groups. Um, you know, we're really what would hit Indian country the hardest with Ryan is what would happen with Medicaid. Um, already you're seeing it with a sequester 
where you already have this really great disparity between the Lakota and a lot of the Midwestern tribes that are straight IHS, they're going to get hit with a straight 10% cut under sequester, whereas the tribes that tend to go more with Medicaid are going to be in a lot better shape. But you take that out of it, and it's just going to be misery across the board. Is the failure of Romney, Romney attempting to lean to the right rather than being Mitt Romney? Is that uh, is that what it's going to go down? Is this the second time around that uh, the Sarah Palin Tea Parties have pulled the Republican Party so far to the right that they become unpalatable to a majority of Americans? I, I think it's the opposite. I think um, if you look back at Bill Clinton um, in his first election. He went out of his way to uh, go after the left and to say to the left, you can't get everything you want. And it was a very strident message at the time. People hated it. Romney's not done that with the right. All he had to do is pick one issue where he could disagree with the right and make it in a really pronounced way and it would see people say, hey, this guy's going to play fair. And he's been um, unable to do that for whatever reason. We've got an extensive effort by the National Congress of American Indians. They say they're going to try to get more voters out from Indian country than ever before. Uh, let me show you a little bit of this. I'm going to stand up. Uh, every uh, Native vote counts, and that's coming out of that uh, organization and that effort at nativevote.org. What can you tell me about what they're doing? You're, you're taking a peek at that in the next few days, aren't you? I'll be looking at the numbers in the next few days, and uh, it's very important. You look just at three states, uh, um, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Montana. In Wisconsin, it could determine the race. It could determine whether um, uh, Paul Ryan is able to carry his home state. And uh, just from a purely statistical point of view, no team has ever won an election where either the president or vice president has not carried their home state. Uh, and there's no way that Romney's carrying Massachusetts. So it really comes down to right. Yeah, it doesn't look like so, Romney's going to carry Wisconsin from it. He's running. He's up for election, by the way, too. I mean, there's sometimes uh, people are saying that he's been really thankful that he decided that to, to run for re-election. However, the polls are also showing that that race is tightening, and it may be that he's not going to be the vice president, nor will he have his old job when it comes back. And that may be a message to the Tea Party right about where the policies of the United States are, where they've taken the U.S., and that is is that uh, people are beginning already to reject it because they find that organization without very little compromise. Right. Uh, what's the goal for the NCAI? Well, in Wisconsin, we're, we're rating about 60 to 65 percent of tribal voters registered to vote. That's about twice the numbers in other states. Okay. What do you know? So what, what, boost that to the most ever. I mean, it, be 70 75 percent 70 75 percent then there's got to be turnout on top of registration oh turnout's really the key in this election because um, this is the most um, th this election has the fewest undecideds of any election and if you look at the polls of those undecideds most of them are just cranky and they're not for either candidate they don't like either candidate they want their old jobs back that aren't coming back <laughs> they have a really um, jaundiced view of the process so they're probably not going to vote. And so you're really looking at who can bring out more people. And uh, that's where get out the vote is going to be really key. So the uh, get out the vote on our side, both sides, actually my understanding is getting very sophisticated where they can do a scan of your residential number and they can tell you that uh, mom's a Democrat, dad's a Republican, and the three children split to the right and left depending on uh, what, what, where they happen to be going on that particular day. Right. What's Demogra any modern demographics is really an interesting science. Uh, and, and for most of the country, it seems to me that if uh, for every 100 uh, Native votes, uh, that's uh, typically, I would say, leaning about 70% Democrat. Though I, that's, there's, the demographics of that may be the opposite in Oklahoma and a few other places, Nevada. Right. In the North, that's definitely true. Okay. Uh, and in the South, it's just going to be in the South. In the South, there's the kind of the greater culture, and then there's Andrew Jackson. And uh, the leg leg legend of Andrew Jackson remains part of Indian country's mythic story. Have we had any of the uh, prominent tribal chairmen step forward to endorse the right or the left in this race? Anything off the top of your head that you're hearing? Oh, a number of tribal chairmen have endorsed and kind of moved in that direction. Okay. Uh, most for Obama. 
And but I will say this: that both Obama and Romney are having fundraising and uh, events with tribal leaders and raising significant amount of money on both sides from Indian country. And, and isn't that the position that the tribes ought to be in? Perhaps the tipping point, the balance of power, where candidates from both political parties have to come visit Indian country, and then we make a decision whether we need to deep in, dig in deep with the Democrats or the Republicans? Right, and historically, Indian affairs were bipartisan, so that makes a lot of sense. It's only been the last few years that it's been so strident. Any last-minute advice? It's going to be an interesting month ahead. We're going to catch up with you again here in the near future. We're going to talk uh, a little bit more. We want to start talking about some of the other politicians that are running. You're covering some of those. Give me a short list of what's popping in your head tonight. We're going to do it another one soon. Well, I think the big one to watch is John Tester in Montana. He's been uh, extremely uh, friendly in Indian country, and uh, it'll be, if he's elected, the Montana tribes will be a big reason for that. Okay. And uh, California, Oklahoma, any of those people pumping out any prominent candidates? Oklahoma has a couple. California has a couple. Um, I don't have a list off the top of my head, but there are a few out there. We're going to do it the next time then when we talk. Let's find that. Let's give it to the people. We'll do some updates in the next couple of weeks. We want to let we, we want them to get out and vote, whether it's for libertarians, the Green Party, Democrats, Republicans, Socialists. We want them to be politically active, don't we? There are actually quite a few Native Americans for the libertarian. And you see it on Facebook and places like that. And uh, Gary Johnson was the governor of New Mexico, so he knows tribes and tribal interests pretty well. Let's follow him. Let's take a look okay. at him once and see what they offer to Indian country. Thanks for joining with us again, Mark. We appreciate your time. Okay, see you, Paul. And that is another roundup of news from Indian country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you for joining with us and come back again soon.